Father, in the name of Jesus. And I pray for all our young people, all our leaders, everybody here, hearing the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord, double joy, triple joy, multiple joy, joy at home, joy at school, joy after exam, joy every moment, grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Everything that causes sorrow, take it away. Every sickness, every infirmity, every problem. Oh Lord, I pray, roll everything away in Jesus' name. And all those young people who are here in every region, every local government, every state, every nation in Africa, beyond Africa. Oh Lord, I pray, the same thing you are doing for us here, young people, you'll do for them in Jesus' name. Move your children forward in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. In Romans chapter 8, we're reading from verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. It says, Nay, that means no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We're talking about conquering. That means there has been a battle. There's a battle in every life. There is conflict in every life. There are dangers and difficulties all around. But then it says, nay. Have you noticed that that sentence starts with no? What that means is something is seen in this battle of life. In this challenge you have. Will you at all be able to overcome and something says nobody can overcome this nobody can live a victorious life nobody can overcome when there is so much difficulty so many challenges and so many difficulties around us think about school think about home think about enemies think about the night Think about powers of occultism. Think about everything around. Somebody is saying, no, we cannot escape. Being defeated. And then he says, no, but I will escape. No, but you will escape. I said you will escape. That's why it says, in all these things, not apart from them, some people feel we can only make progress when there is no difficulty. They say, if every condition is working well, if things are all right everywhere, they say all things being equal, then we can have success. But he says no. He says nay. In all these things, all the things around you, I want you to think about the things that have been trying to stop your progress. And I came to announce to you, nothing can stop your progress. I begin to think about all the challenges and all the difficulties and all the harassments of the devil. That you are thinking, because of this, can I ever overcome? Because of this, can I ever make it? Because of this, can I succeed? It says no. But in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You'll personalize that. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. Then he says, through him that loved us if nobody has really loved you i want to tell you that jesus loves you he loved you enough to spill his blood for you to shed his blood for you he loved you enough to die for you he loved you enough to bear your sin and to bear your shame and to bear your sorrow and to carry your sickness everything that would have stopped you stopped your progress in life anything that would have stopped you from getting to heaven he loved you enough to take everything away i say congrats heaven is yours i say congratulations success is yours because christ loved you so much that he has taken anything that will bring disappointment and defeat and destruction he has taken everything away already that's why it says now whatever satan says whatever enemies say whatever anybody may say i know that in all these things 
I am more than a conqueror. Through Christ, who loved me and still loves me and will keep on loving me until eternity in Jesus' name. I want to look at the scriptures with you concerning this the topic now, the conquering power of Christian teenagers. The conquering power of Christian teenagers. You might not be a teenager, might be a little bit older than a teenager. All the same, you will conquer. All the same, you will overcome. You might even be a little bit younger than a teenager. That is, you are not 13 yet, you are not 14, you are not 19, you are younger than all that. All the same, I welcome you. Because victory is sure for everyone in Jesus' name. The conquering power of Christian teenagers. We saw it already here. It says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. How is it that he chooses us? He separates us. He sets us aside. And he says, we, of all people, we're going to be conquerors. And we're going to be more than conquerors. It's not everybody that has that opportunity. It's not everybody that conquers. Some are defeated in life. Thank God I'm not one of them. And some are conquered in life. Thank God I've escaped all that. Thank God that you are not going to be defeated in life in Jesus' name. Because you are a conqueror already. You are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. How does it happen? Three things. Number one, pardon. Everybody say pardon. Number two, prayer. Everybody say prayer. Number three, privilege. Everybody say privilege. Number one, pardon from the Father. Pardon from the Father. If there's anything that defeats people in life, it's that we've all sinned, we've all done evil, and therefore Satan holds the cane, holds the whip, holds the lashes, and he says, I'll show you something. Look at what you have done, look at where you went, you look at what you wore, look at what you said, and everybody has been in that situation before that's why it says all have seen and come short of the glory of god satan has no forgiveness the enemy has no forgiveness the world has no forgiveness if they heard that we did anything wrong said anything wrong final they say because of that we're going to be slaves and captives all our lives but God says, no, I love you more than that. I love you enough to send Jesus for you. Number one, I will pardon you and silence the devil. You see, your pardon doesn't just benefit you alone. It says something to the devil. It says, I have pardoned him. I have pardoned her. I have forgiven him. I have forgiven her. Therefore, shut up. God said to Satan on your behalf, shut up. And Satan cannot open that dirty mouth, stick him out anymore in Jesus' name. Because he forgives us. Because he pardons us. That is a false step. If you want to shut the devil up, if you want to silence the devil, all you need is get forgiveness, pardon from the Lord, from the Father. Number one then, pardon from the Father. Number two, the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. We're going to pray. And you are going to pray. And God is going to answer your prayer. And begin to think about what you are going to ask the Lord. I'm asking him for this and for this and for that. And praise the Lord. You have a testimony already. Because we came here to conquer. We came here to destroy the works of the devil. And all the works of the devil, they are destroyed from your life in Jesus' name. The prayer of 
faith. Number three, the privilege of followers. Those who follow the Lord. Those who follow the Lord. God must make a difference between those who follow him and those who do not follow him. And we who follow the Lord, there's privilege, there is blessing every day of your life in Jesus' name. Number one, can you tell me? Pardon from the Father. Number two, can you say that? The prayer of faith. Number three, the privilege of followers. Let's come to number one. Number one is pardon from the Father. If you are pardoned already, praise the Lord. But you must understand there are many people who are having doubts in their mind. I'm so bad, that's what they say. I'm so terrible, that's what they say. Nobody will even associate with him because I said that I'm even ashamed of myself. I want to tell you something. God knows all about that. And you know what? That guilt is even the mercy of God. There are some people that do exactly what you have done. They don't have any guilt at all. They say it doesn't matter. What have I done that is more terrible than what other people have done? You know, when somebody is sick and he doesn't have any pain, he can be dying like this, he doesn't have any pain. That's terrible. But when we're sick and we have pain, that makes us to go to the source where we can be healed. And when we have done something wrong and we're having guilt and we're having sorrow and we're having conviction in our heart, that's the mercy of God. And that is what makes us to go to God and say, God, I feel ashamed of myself. I'm so sorry. See what I've done. And you know, the more you paint the bad picture, the more God says, but I love you. I created you. And I still want you to be with me. I want you to fellowship with me. I'm going to forgive you everything. Even while you're still almost crying, I'm, I'm ashamed. See what I've done. The Lord says, there's forgiveness for everyone. I say there's forgiveness for everyone. Look at Isaiah chapter 55, and I'm reading from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 60, 55, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Look at that language of Isaiah. When he said, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Is there any time when he cannot be found? Well, not really, not really. He can be found any time. The not finding is on our side. You know, sometimes we're so sleepy, we can't even seek, seek for him. We can't pray. Now that we're awake, while he can be found. Sometimes we're so tired, we don't even think, we want to seek the Lord. Now that we're active and alert, and agile that's the time to seek the lord while he may be found you know there are times some people say i'll pray when i get back home you know on your own it's a little bit more difficult to pray but over here when we're singing together praying together encouraging each other it's easier to pray that's why it says while you have this opportunity at this time now seek ye the lord while he may be found and call ye upon him while is near. Look at verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way. That already tells you something. It says, I'm not going to destroy you because you are wicked. I'm not going to judge you now because you are wicked. I'm not going to throw you away because you are wicked. All I want from you is let the wicked forsake his way. That's all. That's all. Once you come and you say, Lord, I recognize I'm wicked. I recognize I'm bad. God says, that's all. I'll forgive you. Because Jesus already died for you on the cross of Calvary. It says, let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man is thoughts. That is the secret plan. I will steal I will do this, I will do that. We've not done it yet, but we're planning. When we finish here, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And God knows that already. He says, all right now, I'll forget about it. Just forget about that thing you said you're going to do. I'll forgive you. That's the pardon. Then he goes on to say, let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. Can I say that again? He will have mercy upon you. 
I said to have mercy upon you. You know, there are some people, they say, I don't think I want to go to church because I've done something bad. That's the time to come to church. I don't think I want to go and listen to the preaching because I'm feeling guilty. I've done something bad. That's the time to listen to the preaching. I don't think I want to pray. I don't feel like praying because I feel terrible. That's the time to pray. It says, he will have mercy on us. He knows how we feel. He knows what we've done. And he says, even at that very time, that's the time to come. And then he says, and to our God, for he will abundantly tell me pardon. He will abundantly tell me pardon. Abundantly, abundantly. He will go beyond what you've done. He'll wash everything away. He'll cleanse everything. There'll be no more remembrance of those bad things you have done in Jesus' name. What if somebody does not do that? And he says, point two is what I'm interested in. I'm only interested in prayer. The prayer of faith. This pardon from the Father, that one, I don't, I don't know about that. Look at Psalm 66. Psalm 66 I'm reading from verse 18. Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I say, all I want to do is pray. All I want to do is command. All I want to do is cast out devil. All I want to do is heal the sick. All I want to do is you know, kneel in prayer and begin to bombard heaven with my request. It says, but he will not hear. We have to take the first step. We have to have the first miracle, the miracle of forgiveness, the miracle of salvation, the miracle of the mercy of God. That's why it says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me, but he's about to hear us. I said he's about to hear us because we take the first step forward and then we're forgiven. Our sins are gone. Look at Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. I'm reading verse 9. If I were you, I will mark this verse 9 and another verse. I'm still going to read in that same chapter. Look at this now. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. It's a verse to mark. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Abomination is something so dirty, is something so defiled, is something so way up that we detest, we hate. We don't want to come near it because it will even soil our clothes because it's an abomination. And it says, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. The people that say, all I'm interested in, the prayer of it, the prayer of it, pray for us and go. Just come and pray for us. All we need is pray, pray, pray. He says, but how about this other side now? How about our guilt? How about the condemnation we have in our hearts? How about the sin we have committed? How about the, you know, we've gone astray? He wants to give us pardon for us. Then look at verse 13 now. He that covereth his sins, tell me, shall not prosper. What does that mean? It means he that covers fire inside the house. The fire is there in the kitchen and then the boy doesn't want to talk about it because daddy will say how did that happen mommy will say how did that happen because we don't want daddy or mommy to say how did that happen we cover up that fire we cover up that and the fire is burning burning and then it will burn everything in that kitchen then go to the sitting room and go to the room and then burn everything down it's better to expose it so that the firefighters can come very quickly and put it up the sin is like the fire or sometimes it's like a little kind of um, water that is oozing out of the pipe and uh, you know you maybe you are cutting the grass and mistakenly your cutlass or whatever has struck uh, the pipe and then water is coming out and the water is going to flood everywhere but i don't want to talk about because if i report that and i say look at the water they might ask the question who did that how did that happen 
and because I don't want you, I don't want them to know who made that to start happening, I cover it up. Then there'll be no progress. The old place will be flooded. That's like sin. If the sin is there, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to expose it because if I do, you'll say, how could you do that? How did you do that? There'll be shame. There'll be sorrow. They might even may punish me or whatever. But you see, if we cover it up, it will be spreading and spreading. It will spoil every other thing. There's no covering up in Jesus' name. I say there's no covering up in Jesus' name. Because if you expose it to the Lord, the Lord is not going to destroy you because of that. He's just going to, okay, don't do that again. I forgive you. And I give you the power to go and sin no more. You'll have it in Jesus' name. And then it says, But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have, tell me, mercy. And mercy is what we're looking for. I said, mercy is what you are looking for. And the only way to have that mercy is whoso confesseth and forsaketh. Not only confess, some people say, I've confessed, I don't know, a hundred times, but did you forsake? That's the secret. He that confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. We well, thank God because the mercy of God is flowing freely in Jesus' name. Now we come to number two. Who can tell me what number two is? The prayer of faith. That's the kind of prayer you are going to pray. In uh, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Many people are asking, how do you pray the prayer of faith? The prayer of faith. When the heart is free. When the guilt is gone. When the condemnation is gone. Now we're free to come in the presence of God. And because of that freedom, we're able to pray the prayer of faith. Look at this. In James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, wonderful. If any of you lack wisdom, does anybody need wisdom here? What are those people? Praise the Lord, he'll give you in Jesus' name. You know, to succeed in academic work, how I need wisdom. And then, as I make my choices in life, I want to choose a friend, I want to choose a cause, I want to choose a school, I want to choose a college, I want to choose a career, I want to choose destiny at last. It needs wisdom. And who is sufficient for these things? I don't have all the wisdom I need. You don't have all the wisdom you need. That's why it says, if any of you lack wisdom, and then sometimes we've read and read and read, but knowledge alone does not pass exam. It needs the appropriate use of that knowledge. That's wisdom. Practical wisdom. Academic wisdom. Relational wisdom. Wisdom in life wisdom at home wisdom in church wisdom everywhere the kind of wisdom that puts us over and makes us succeed i pray you will succeed if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of god that's prayer let him pray let him ask of god that give it to how many people all men liberally he will answer your prayer and upbraideth not it shall be given him. But look at verse 6. But let him ask in faith. Let her ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Nothing doubting. For he that wavereth, he that doubteth, is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. But for let not that man think that he shall receive any sin of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We need wisdom. We must ask in faith. We need salvation. We ask in faith. We need a good, righteous, holy life. We must ask in faith. We need success. We'll ask in faith. We need healing. We ask in faith. We need deliverance. By the way, your deliverance has come. We need deliverance. We are asking faith. Anything and everything we are asking, we ask in faith. We pray in faith. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. We're looking at verse, verse 
15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Not just any kind of prayer. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. You are healed in Jesus' name. That's what brings miracle. It's not just that we pray. Anybody can pray. Even those who don't know Christ, some of them pray. Those who don't know the true God of the Bible, some of them pray. And those who don't even attend church, some of them pray. But it's not a prayer of faith because it doesn't go through Jesus Christ. It is not prayed in the name of Jesus. But it is only the prayer of faith that God answers. He will answer your prayer. It says in verse 15, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. If you have um, a friend who is not here because he's so sick in the hospital, when we're praying, mention his name, mention her name in the hospital over there, the Lord will raise her up. If you have any of your siblings, any of your younger ones, or any of your older, you are concerned about them. Daddy and mommy are concerned about them. Because of this particular difficulty, he was born that way, she was born that way. Mention that in prayer, God will raise him up in Jesus' name. If it's daddy or mommy that is having a challenge, you know about it. And daddy or, you know, in the, in the family devotion has raised the prayer request and says, hey, family, let's pray about this, let's pray about this, as we pray. Remember that you'll be surprised because God will surprise you with a miracle. God will do it for daddy and for mommy in Jesus' name. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. That is how we spoke about that at the first time. That's a pardon from the Father. Confess your faults one to another. Confess your faults one to another. Now we need to understand that. That doesn't mean you go about and you tell, you know, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Everybody you meet, I'm a sinner. Is that what it means? No. If you know you've offended somebody, you don't need to publicize that and tell everybody and, you know, I feel guilty, I feel in nonentity, I feel like a rat, I feel miserable, I'm a terrible person. No, that's not what it means. All it means is, you know, your friend, you said something that, uh, you know, he doesn't appreciate. Or your brother, your sister, you did something that she doesn't appreciate. My sister, I'm sorry about that. And once you say, yes, that's all, that's all. Don't come back tomorrow again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All the time, God has forgiven. He has forgiven. Once we forgive, we forget. It's forgotten in Jesus' name. So, don't go about telling everybody I'm a terrible person. That's not what it means. It just says that we confess our faults to the people who have offended. And then it says that she may be healed. We'll be healed in Jesus' name. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Prayer will work in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11, I'm looking at verse 6. Hebrews 11 verse 6. It says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. As we are praying to say, I'm coming to God. I believe he is there, he is hearing me. I believe that he's going to hear my prayer because I'm diligently seeking him. And he's a rewarder. He's going to add something to my life. He's going to reward me for even coming here and for opening my mouth to say, Lord or oh my Father, do this for me in the name of Jesus. And it is done. I said it is done. I mean, you know that God is going to answer their prayer. And it's going to give you more than you're asking for. How many people know that? You know that? I said you know that. It's confirmed in Jesus' name. Number three now. Tell me number three. The privilege of followers. The privilege of followers. What we mean by privilege? It's um, like a provision that doesn't come ordinarily except to these favored people. Privileged people. It's a, a kind of 
provision, a kind of help, a kind of um, answer that doesn't come to everybody, but is going to come to you because you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Special favor for everyone and special blessing for everyone following after the Lord. The privilege of followers that is followers of the lord jesus christ we're looking at uh, matthew chapter 4 matthew chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 19 you might have had this verse before very simple but it's so broad and it's so wide matthew chapter 4 i'm looking at verse 19 it says unto them follow me and i will make you fishers of men there are some people that have limited understanding of that verse. You see, he was talking to Peter. He was talking to John. He was talking to Andrew. He was talking to James. And he said, you have been fishermen. That's what they were doing. They were at the sea, on the sea, and they were fishing. Now he said, I'm going to upgrade your profession. I'm going to move you forward. He's still fishing in a way. But now, you will not be fishing in the Sea of Galilee. I'm going to widen it to the sea of the whole world. The sea of humanity. Don't we say that sometimes? Hey, there's so many. I see a sea of heads. That means a multitude. And the Lord said, I'm now upgrading you. I'm going to make you fishers of tell me of men now if you apply that to yourself you are not a fisherman ordinarily you are a student you are studying and the lord is saying i'm going to move you forward in uh, what you're doing you will go from being a student to being a teacher i thought you say amen. amen you will go from being a person just over here learning you are going to become a leader he's saying that you are going to move from where you are now you are just in the class and you are listening but he says you will leave that position of listening eventually i'll make you a doctor i'll make you an engineer i will make you a hero I will make you a champion. You know, everybody will not be a pastor. Thank God for those that the Lord is saying, follow me, I will make you a pastor. Follow me, I'll make you an evangelist. Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. But follow me, I'll make you a doctor. We need doctors too. We also need pastors. We need engineers too. And we also need teachers. We need, um, you know, we need all those professional people. And the Lord is saying, all you have to do is follow me and I will make you what God has created you for. God created you for something. I said God created you for something. And he says for you to come to the realization of what God has created you for, follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you. He will do it. I said he will do it. He doesn't make a non-entity. You don't have to make a non-entity. You know, non-entity will just... Don't you see some of the grass or some of the wild things that grow by themselves? Non-entities grow up themselves. You don't have to make that. Failures grow up by themselves. You don't have to make that. And the people that don't have anything, do anything in life, they just fold your hand and do anything you'll become one of those you will not become a non-entity in jesus name but you see to become somebody and that's you to become somebody i said that's you god has to make you somebody and thank god thank god you know sometimes i meet some of these uh, you know some of the people that were can you think about that can you think about that that i was uh, teaching the youth a uh, bible study some years ago i think it's more than 10 years now more than 15 years even and we went through first samuel and then we went through the went through proverbs and then sometimes i you know some of those uh, choir members i saw them at that time youth choir we, we were called them i was still what do we call us today what 
they, I want them to tell me their name. That's what I'm asking. What do we call you today? Uh -huh. And I wanted to hear your voice. You know, I, I meet some of them today, and then I, I, I met somebody, and he, I said, he said, Pastor, do you recognize me? I said, I don't know. What's your name? You are taller than myself now. And then he mentioned his name, and then he said, I was at a youth Bible study, 19, such and such. I said, where are you now? The, the young man is, you know, up there somewhere. Up there somewhere. God has made him somebody. God will make you somebody. You know, sometimes uh, you know, I'm at the airport and then you one of these uh, ladies, uh, well-dressed and all that, ran after me and said, hey, good morning, pastor. I said, good morning, how are you? He said, I'm fine. I said, hey, what's your name? Then she mentioned the name. He said, pastor, you look like you don't recognize me. I said, hey, tell me your name. Then she told me the name. I said, where are you now? She said, you know, so up there somewhere. And then I said, how, how do you recognize? I said, I was, you know, one of those young people you were teaching those years. And said, I'm somebody now i pass that on to you are going to be somebody in jesus name you know because you know they followed they followed they followed and god made them something and god is going to make you somebody brother somebody how are you sister somebody where are you you are there god will do it in jesus name he said follow me and i will make you the time has come he'll make you in jesus name we're looking at first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 and i'm reading in first peter chapter 2 verse 21 for even here unto were ye called because christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that ye should be that ye should follow 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 his steps those are the followers and then look at verse 24 who his own self bear our sins in his own body that's what i spoke about before that's the forgiveness the pardon on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness tell me the rest by whose tribes we were healed that's yours the privilege of deliverance that's yours the privilege of success that's yours the privilege of becoming somebody 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 in life that is yours in jesus name now the time has come for us to allow god to do that in our lives that is he wants to make us make us what we ought to be you will not be a mediocre you will not be a failure you'll not be a drop out and then as we take the steps number one pardon from the father number two the prayer of faith number three the privilege of followers then it will happen i said it will happen let's rise up now and make it happen Let's rise up and make it happen. Open your mouth and pray to the Lord. Start with pardon from the Father. If there's any guilt, any condemnation, anything that you've done, remember God loves you. He loves you so much. He doesn't want you to carry guilt all around, condemnation all around. Jesus died for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life in jesus name we all pray as but an eyes closed if you want that pardon from the father so that the pardon will shut the mouth of the devil concerning you you know he's the accuser of the people accuse you are bad you've done this you've done this you've done that satan will shut up on your behalf and if you want that forgiveness that pardon what a day what a wonderful scene right now it's bad and nice close just raise up your hand and then as you raise up your hand we will pray that pardon will come. I'm waiting for you. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. We don't have enough space to call you for just where you are. Just raise up your hand. And God can see your heart right there. Can see that hand right there. He sees your sincerity. He sees your willingness. And he sees that you want 
forgiveness. You want to have peace of mind and you want to have the joy of salvation? Just raise up your hand. Quietly tell the Lord over there while you are raising up your hand, Lord, I'm sorry. I feel ashamed. I shouldn't have done that, all those things. Lord, please forgive me. I believe that Jesus died for me to take away my guilt. I believe that Jesus died for me to take away my condemnation. I receive him now as my Lord and Savior. You promise you will pardon. Pardon me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe. I'm forgiven. I am saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Keep those hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah. we thank you for these tender boys and girls, how they have responded to your word. You are a merciful God. As they have confessed and forsaken their sins, forgive them in Jesus' name. Yeah. And I pray, Lord, the strength, the grace, the power to live to your glory righteously. Grant that to them in Jesus' name. In times of weakness, be very near to them. Support them. So, um, strengthen them. So that they will not keep on falling and falling and falling into those same things again in Jesus' name. We accept it for them and they accept it too. We thank you because we know you've done that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, privilege. Everybody say privilege. privilege. Healing, that's a privilege. Deliverance, that's a privilege. Wisdom, that's a privilege. Success, that's a privilege. Provision, that's a privilege. All that you need, the Lord will provide for you in Jesus' name. Remember, don't you ever forget this. So you can tell your friend, you, you, you'll say, I know God is going to make me somebody. I said, God is going to make me somebody. What are you? God is going to make me somebody. What are you? God is going to make me somebody. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your children. We accept it already. We are happy already. We know we will not be non-entities in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, the privilege of healing will come to everyone. That sickness, that pain, that infirmity, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, these are your children. Touch them. Heal them now in Jesus' name. Any spirit of oppression, any spirit of affliction, any spirit of torment, tormenting the brain or the mind, I command those evil spirits, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Set your children free. No more bondage. No more attack. No more affliction. No more epilepsy. Set them free in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS, I command you, be healed. All those internal sicknesses, I command you, be healed. I command failure in that life. Come out in Jesus' name. I speak success into your life. Victory in your life. I speak authority into your life. I speak provision in your life. All that you need to be what God has created you for, I speak all that into your life in Jesus' name. Lift up every child. Raise up every child. Cancel all the works of the devil away from their lives in Jesus' name. 
give them the strength and the grace to keep on following you. Make everyone a hero, a champion, a somebody. Confirm it in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I said in Jesus' name we pray. Joy, joy, joy in my soul. Joy, joy, joy where? In my soul. Joy, joy, joy where? It will never leave you in Jesus' name.